of the class that you just attended, um, just let me know and I'll email it out to you, usually um, before end of business today, could be as late as tomorrow morning, uh, but usually before end of business today, you'll have a copy of the class you just attended. Okay, so let's get started. This is the Darcy Marketing class. Uh, the Darcy Marketing class obviously focuses on Darcy and marketing. Now, um, important differentiation though, Yes, Darcy does automated marketing. At the end of this class, though, we're going to be focusing on manual marketing. It's a little bit different. Um, so first, though, we're going to talk about Darcy. So let's click on Darcy here. And that brings up our setup Darcy window. The first thing we need to do is what we like to call hire Darcy. She's essentially is going to perform some tasks like an assistant manager. So I'm going to select setup account. And that's the first thing we need to do in order to set Darcy up and essentially hire her. So it may look a little confusing, but we're going to go over the fields. Where it says business name, you put in your business's name. Next, your business's address, city, state, zip code, and telephone number. Then we have the business website. Now, the business website, of course, is your business's website. You don't have to have anything here. But if you do, then there will be a link to it uh, in some of the things that Darcy does that will allow them to go directly to your site. Next is the business email address. Now, this is a little bit different. This, normally you would put in like a manager's email address or an info email address, something like that. If somebody receives an email from Darcy, not a text now, but if an email, if they receive an email from Darcy and they reply to that email, it must go somewhere. Now, they're going to be getting a Darcy email, so if they reply to it, we don't want it going to Darcy. So she will forward it to whatever email address you put in this field. Next, we have the owner's email address and the owner's email address, too. Same thing. The only difference is, is that you may have, the owner may have a business email address and a home email address, and they may want things going to both. Or perhaps you have two owners, so you put in two different owners here. Of course, you may have more than two owners, but we only have space for the two here. That's what we've allotted. Next, we have upload logo. If I click this button, it allows me to browse anywhere on my computer and upload an image. Hopefully, it's your logo because everything that Darcy sends out should have your logo on it. Next, we have text account username and text account password. You don't need to have these. However, there are certain things that Darcy can do via text rather than email and things that you can do in manual marketing via text rather than email. So if you choose to do that, you must have a text account username and password. You can get those by emailing to this email right here, rates at prosolutionssoftware.com. If you're using the cloud version of the software, then there's a certain number of free texts that you get, so you can get your account for free. If you are also processing credit cards to our preferred provider, you get an additional set of free texting. However, if you're doing neither, if you're installed or if you're using your own credit card processor, which is fine, uh, you can still get your text account user name and password. You just pay for them. Um, it's not terribly expensive. I believe it's $30 for the first 1,000 texts and $20 for the groups of 1,000 texts after that. They do not roll over. They are monthly. Next, on the right-hand side, we have your social networking icons. I don't know what social networking sites you may have, but you can put in Google+, Yelp, City Search, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. So if your business has a for instance, a Pinterest site, go to your business's Pinterest site and copy and paste the URL for that directly into the Pinterest field. Same thing with Facebook. Go to your business's Facebook page, copy and paste the URL directly into this field. Do that for each of these that you have. After putting those in, you press save. Do not concern yourself with online gift cards, online scheduling, or online retail. That's part of a different class entirely, that's your online store, and we will not be discussing that in this class. So after filling in these, you press save. It will let you know that your settings have been saved. OK, and exit. Darcy has now been hired. Now, Darcy has five main jobs that she can perform. Now, she does other things as well, but these are the five main jobs that we're going to talk about. The first one is appointment reminders and confirmations. She can send appointment reminders and confirmations out via email and text. So we're going to select email confirmations. Now we get to write whatever we want to write. So don't worry about what you already see here. You can change it. And 
this little information I here has a list of what are called variables that you can use. If you're going to use the variable, it must be put in the same way you see it here. For instance, open caret op uh, close caret in lower case will insert your operator's name. Open caret capital C capital F close caret will insert the client's first name, etc. So everybody's email will be completely unique to them. So this might say something like uh, reminder for Carrie. And then here, hi Carrie, remember that you have an appointment for a, oh, I don't know, let's say European facial with Sally on January 18th at 11 a.m. Please arrive 15 minutes early to unwind. Again, this is what I've written, you write whatever you want. So after you have filled in your subject and your greeting using the variables so that everybody's is unique, then you come down here and choose how many reminders you want to go out. You can send one, two, three, or four. I've chosen two. And I can choose two days in advance of their appointment for this to go out and one day in advance for this to go out. Now, when this goes out, it has your logo on it. It also has your social networking icons on it. It also has a large button that says, click here to confirm your appointment. If your customer clicks that button, it will mark the appointment confirmed right on the appointment book. It will date and timestamp it and say that it was confirmed by the customer through Darcy. Now, just like if you were using a piece of paper and you called me and you said, hey, Matt, just wanted to remind you about your appointment on the 18th at 10 a.m. And I said, oh, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. I'll see you then. Okay, so that's confirmed. Well, if you marked it confirmed, you wouldn't call me the next day to tell me that all over again. Darcy does the same thing. If you're sending out multiple reminders, if they confirm it on the first or second one, it won't send out to the next or third. So something to remember, uh, uh, think about there, okay? Next, once you've set this up the way you want it, you check this box that says active and then accept. Then you can exit out. You have now set up your appointment reminders and confirmations. Darcy will check your book every day, 365 days a year, and she will send out the necessary emails. You can do the very same thing via text. Obviously, with a text, you don't have artwork. Your logo, your social networking icons, and the big blue button, those won't be there. Instead, this will have something like, it's just text, of course, and it's limited in its characters, 140 character maximum. So this says, reminder for Carrie, Carrie, your appointment with Sally is on January 18th at 11 a.m. Reply Y to confirm. Remember, the large button that says, click here to confirm your appointment, does not exist in the text. So you would include a line like this, reply Y to confirm. They hit Y, they hit send, and it does exactly the same thing. It marks the appointment confirmed on the appointment book with a date and timestamp showing that it was confirmed by the customer through Darcy. Again, everything else remains exactly the same down here as it was with the email. Don't forget to check active and accept if you're going to be using text. So we'll exit out of that. The next thing that we're going to talk about, unless there are any questions on appointment reminders and confirmations. Any questions at all? All right, moving on, um, we have our email campaigns. Now these are automated marketing campaigns. So if I click on email campaigns, it's going to bring up a window that allows me to go through my t over 20 different templates that I have. So I've got everything from Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, birthdays, going back to school, follow-ups, anniversaries, everything you can imagine. All of the major holidays are in here that affect the beauty industry as well. So in this case, let's choose birthday. So I'll choose birthday, and I'm going to, again, be able to choose how many campaigns do I want to run, one, two, three, or four. This time I've selected four. Now, this is only going to work if in your client files you are, in fact, gathering their dates of birth. So in this case, what I've said is I want four campaigns to run. Then I go down here and I get to choose when these go out from zero to 30 days. In this case, I've said I want the first message to go out 30 days before my customer's birthday. Second message, two weeks before. Third message, seven days before. And fourth message, on their birthday. If this was a one, it would be the day before their birthday. That a zero means on the actual date. So now I've said, okay, my first message is going out 30 days before. So now I get to select what is going out. So I choose this button, first message, and I get to write whatever I'd like. 
So happy birthday, Carrie, because I'm using this variable again. And this is the, these are the variables here for marketing. Some of them are a little bit different than what you had in the appointment confirmations. So don't get them confused. So I've got a happy birthday, Carrie. Happy birthday, Carrie. It looks like you'll be celebrating your special day in about a month. Now, I wrote that because I know this is going out 30 days prior to her birthday. Be sure to come before, and this open carrot, capital BD, closed carrot, is going to insert her birthday. So be sure to come before, and then her birthday would be here 30 days from now. For a birthday discount to look and feel great, blah, 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 blah. You write whatever you want. While you're writing this, you get to choose what font it's in and the font size. You also, while you're writing, can choose some of the words to be bold or underlined or italicized, or you can even change their color. You can even insert hyperlinks directly into the message. So you might have something like, click here to book your next appointment online, or click here to write a review about us, whatever it may be. So you can actually insert hyperlinks directly into your message. Once you've successfully written the message you want, then you get to come down here where it says image to use. Now we have eight different pre-made images for you. The image, your logo would be down here. Don't worry about the size. It's gonna be whatever the shape and size of your logo is that you've uploaded. But you get to choose from the different pieces of artwork that we've provided for you. You may not like any of the artwork that we've provided, and that's fine. If you do, great, just choose one of them. If, however, you decide, you know what, I looked at all eight of them, don't like them, then you get to upload your own custom artwork. Browse to wherever it is on your computer and upload it. And it will then be a custom campaign with your own artwork. Now, please note that Pro Solution Software does have a graphic arts department. We can supply you with the specs so that you can create your artwork on your own, or the graphic arts department will actually create the, uh, the new artwork for you with your help. So you'll work together with the graphic arts department to generate what you want. The graphic arts department is free. It is always at your disposal during our regular business hours, and there is never a charge to work with our graphic arts department, even if they are the ones creating the actual image for you or even creating a logo for you, et cetera. Okay? So after you upload your custom image or you've chosen an image that you like from ours, then the next thing that we would recommend, you don't have to do this, but highly recommended, is hit send test email. Type in your own email address and hit OK. Now, it'll use a fake name, a generic name, like so it might say something like Happy Birthday Jane or Happy Birthday John when it sends it out to you. But you're going to be able to see what it looks like, what your customers will see when they receive it. After you've done that, if it looks OK to you, then you can just save the template and exit. You're done with the first message. Go down to the second message and do it all over again. This can be a completely unique message with a completely different piece of artwork. Send yourself the test email, save the template, and exit. And do that for all four. Once you've done that, you get to forget about it. Darcy runs 365 days a year. And as she's going through what she does, she'll look. If you've activated your birthday template, so you check the box that says active and you exit out, after you've saved it, of course, because you've activated it, every day Darcy will run and check to see, do you have any customers whose birthday is exactly 30 days away? If it is, they'll get this one. Any that have a birthday 14 days away, if so, they'll get this one, etc. Based on what I've selected here, and you can choose your own time frames. So that's birthday. You do exactly the same thing with most of these others. For instance, Valentine's Day. The system knows that Valentine's Day is February 14th. Choose your message, write whatever you'd like. Some things can be bold, change colors, create or choose your own artwork. Send yourself a test email to know what it looks like, save it and exit. So it works just like the birthday. Activate it and save the template and then you get to forget about it. As you get closer to Valentine's Day, Darcy will do her thing. Next, we do have some that are a little bit different. Most of these, like Valentine's Day and birthday and anniversary and Mother's Day, etc., most of them go out before the date in question. However, there are three that go out after the date. For instance, one of those is follow-up. So if it's going out after the date, what is the date? The date is your customer's last transaction with you. So in this case, I said I just want one campaign and one day from their last transaction. So what that means is that everybody who visited me yesterday will get this message, whatever it is I want to put in. 
So I wrote something like, thank you, Car- uh, yeah, thank you, Carrie. Carrie, thank you so much for visiting us yesterday. We hope everything went great for you and look forward to seeing you again. Please print out this email for 5% off your next visit. So that's what I've written. You write whatever you want, make it look the way you want, and choose your artwork. So in this case, everything is the same now as what we already discovered. However, remember this goes out after the date. It's one of three that does that. Another one is the follow-up new. It is exactly the same as follow-up except for one important difference. Not only is it checking their last date of transaction, but it is confirming that their last date of transaction is also their first transaction with you. If that's the case, that means that this is a brand new customer. So you might send them a distinct message to new customers, whatever that may be. Next, we have the lost client. This is the last one that also goes out after the date. In this case, however, instead of from zero to 30 days as options, you have 30 to 360 days. Again, this uses the date of their last transaction. So in this case, what I'm saying is if somebody came in and visited me, and a whole three months have gone by and they have not returned, I want them to get this first message. We miss you, Carrie. Carrie, it's been a long time since we've seen you. Please let us know that what we can do to make your next visit more memorable, et cetera. Choose your artwork. Everything else then remains the same. Now, Darcy's not dumb. With the lost client, if they have a future appointment booked with you, she won't send out the message even if they haven't been in in three months or four months or five months or eight months like I've selected, even if they haven't been in in that amount of time, if they have a future appointment booked, she won't send it out. You don't want to look foolish and you know, say, hey, please come back. We miss you when they've got an appointment booked for next week or next month or whatever it may be. Okay. Any questions on the uh, campaigns? All right, no questions, moving on. The third job that Darcy does is the notifications. Now, notifications are where she really does behave like an assistant manager. I'm gonna click on this, and there are lots of different things here. Whatever you put a check next to, Darcy's going to do. Anything you leave unchecked, she won't bother with. What she's doing, most of these, not all, but most of these are suspicious activities. So for instance, if I put a check here that says when a cash payment is voided, if one of your employees voids a cash payment, you will be notified instantly by Darcy that that cash payment was voided and it will give the transaction number, the date and the time. And if you're using password protection on that particular uh, option, it will even tell you who did it. Next we have email client when booked or unbooked or rescheduled. Now, this is not a suspicious activity. In this case, if I had this checked, when I book an appointment for a customer or unbook their appointment or reschedule their appointment, the system will send them an email letting them know that that's been done. So it's just a great way for your customer to know that you're on the ball. If they call and say, I can't make it next week, next Monday, I'm so sorry, something's come up, can I change it to Tuesday? You say, sure, so you go to the appointment book, you reschedule their appointment from Monday to Tuesday, they get an instant email that lets them know that that just happened. When an operator's scheduled hours are changed, when payroll is processed, when a gift certificate is modified. This one I checked because when a price is modified at the point of sale, that's an area that I might want to be instantly notified as the boss or the manager that somebody just modified a price at the POS. When rewards points are adjusted, I checked that one because that's a great way for your staff to commit a little bit of fraud um, where they throw a bunch of points onto their friend's loyalty program so that their friend might get something for free that they didn't actually earn. So you might say, you know what, if somebody did that, I want to know it. Now, 99.9% of the time, your employees are going to be doing everything they're supposed to be doing. However, it's kind of nice to know that when they do some of the things that might be a little questionable, Darcy's going to notify you when a transaction is modified. This one here, when a client file is printed, this one actually caught a thief. We had one of our customers contact us to let us know that Darcy contacted her at two o'clock in the morning to let her know that one of her staff had just printed out a list of all of her customers with their names, addresses, telephone numbers, et cetera. Of course, all of that is password protectable, but I just want you to be aware of that. Okay. Now, remember I said not all of these are suspicious activities. This one here, email tomorrow's schedule to operator. If you've got that checked, Darcy will email your staff every night what their schedule is for the following day. 
just their schedule, of course, nobody else's. Email closing report to the boss. If you have this one checked, maybe the boss is not the one that actually closes the drawer at the end of the day. They go home. A couple hours later, the business closes. One of the employees closes the drawer. And the boss gets an email that says, hey, boss, here are tonight's closing numbers, etc." So whatever you check, that's what Darcy's going to be handling for you. Whatever you leave unchecked, she will ignore. Then you simply press save and you're done with your notifications. Any questions on that before we continue? No, okay, so one quick thing I want you to be aware of. In the notifications, this one here that says email tomorrow's schedule to operator, and this one, email sales detail with client names to operator. Um, I want you to be aware that you might say, you know what, that would be good for some of my employees, but not for all. You get to control which of them receive it right in their employee file. So for instance, if I wanted Jessica to receive that message every night showing her what her schedule is for the next day, you must have her email on file and you must check this box that says schedule, then she'll get it. If every time you book, unbook, or reschedule an appointment for Jessica and you want her to receive that information, this must be blue. And if every night you want her to get a report of every sale that she got credit for, this must be checked. So even though you've checked them in Darcy, that doesn't necessarily mean that your employee is going to get it unless one of these or all three or two of them, et cetera, are checked. Okay, moving back in. So we've talked about three of her five jobs. The next one we're gonna talk about is Come Again. <clears throat> Come Again works with services and it allows you to put a time frame on a service. And what I mean by that is not the amount of time that the service takes to perform, but the amount of time between when that service is received and when it should be repeated. So if I go to setup and I go into my salon or spa services, I can choose any service and then I can go to Darcy and I can choose from one to 52 weeks. So let's pretend that when I do a physical therapy 60, in my opinion, a client that receives that should be receiving it again weekly. So what I'm going to do here is set this for three weeks. That means if a customer comes in and gets a physical therapy 60 and three whole weeks have gone by and they have not repeated it, Darcy will send them out this email so long as they allow that. Again, in their client file, you get to make those notifications. If they don't allow you to send those things, you don't check, check it in the client file, they won't receive it. But after three weeks have gone by, somebody received that, they have not repeated it. She sends out this, don't neglect your physical therapy. I know that a busy schedule can get in the way, blah, 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 whatever you want to write. And according to the consultants that helped us develop this, this results in about a 7% increase in client retention and service sales, reminding people about these. Now, Darcy can also do it before the date. And the reason she can do that is because of this. Remember, if they have a future appointment for this service, she won't send out the message. So even though you say it should be repeated every week and they haven't come in in three weeks, she won't bother sending this to them if they have a future appointment set for that service or for any service within that same group. So it doesn't make you look foolish. Hey, you missed your schedule when they're scheduled for next week or the week after that. Maybe they were on vacation, who knows? However, what if you've got a service that you believe now, let's say it should be repeated every eight weeks. I don't know. Let me just grab anything here. I'll go with waxing and I'll do a, um, okay, we'll just go with a face wax here. And let's pretend that you say, you know what, if you get a face wax, you should be repeating that every eight weeks. So I'm going to go to Darcy, click on the come again. And instead of changing this to maybe 10 weeks or 11 weeks to let them know that they missed their cycle, I can change that to maybe six weeks and then put in my subject that might say something like, hey, don't let that facial hair grow back, and my body that might say, you know what, it's been six weeks since your last face waxing. Now the system knows that because you've set it for six weeks, and it's using the date of that transaction for the face wax. So in this case, I say, you know what, you should have your next face waxing within the next couple of weeks. Please call us to book that. Remember, Darcy won't send the message out if they have a future appointment booked. So in this case, instead of letting them know that they missed their cycle, you're letting them know that they should have an appointment booked for them. And if they don't, the message goes out. And if they do, it won't bother. Any questions on that before I continue? 
No, I just wanted you to know I'm still here and I'm listening and I was laughing at your <laughs> removing the facial hair thing. That was funny. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad that you're still here and thank you for laughing. Uh, All right. Now, I'll the next thing we're going to be. <laughs> The next thing that we're talking about here is the retail buy again. That's her fifth and final main job. Now, the buy again works very similarly to the come again, but instead of on services, it's based on inventory. Each product has this button here that says buy again. And just like the come again, you can choose from one to 52 weeks and you can choose your subject and your body, whatever you want it to say. Now, I don't know if you sell shampoos, but I did this one for a shampoo. This is my just an all-in-one shampoo, and let's pretend that it's 20 ounces, and let's pretend that I have told uh, my customers to use two ounces of it every other day. Well, if that's the case, then in about three weeks, this bottle should be empty if they use it the way I told them. So I might write something like this. My subject says you're just an all-in-one shampoo is running low. My body says if you've been using the shampoo like we told you, then you should notice that you're either out or running low. Please print this email out and bring it in with you for 5% off your next purchase within the next 30 days. Then I change my weekly to something like perhaps five weeks, even though I know it should run out in three weeks. I don't know if they're actually using it the way I've told them to. And I'm not that guy that likes to honk the horn the instant the light turns green. So I'm giving them an opportunity to run out and come in and buy it again. But if a whole five weeks have gone by since the last time they purchased this product, they might get that email if they permit it. Again, according to the consultants that helped us develop this, this results in about an 8% increase in retail sales and about a 1% increase in client retention. Why? And service sales. Why? Because if somebody's coming in to replenish their product, oftentimes they book an appointment for a service to go along with it. Okay? All right. Going to be talking about, after we have set up her five jobs, we've already talked about all five of them, the appointment reminders and confirmations, the automated marketing campaigns, the notifications, the come again and the buy again. Now we have essentially created the jobs for her. But now that we've done that, we've given her a job description, for lack of a better term. Now we have to tell her when to do it. And that's what these and these boxes are for. So if we're not going to be using come again or buy again, we just leave these unchecked. If we are going to be using confirmations and campaigns, we check it. If we're going to be doing the end of day functions, what are the end of day functions? Those are some of those notifications I told you about, like sending the end of day report, sending the closing report, emailing the schedule to your employees. So some of these, not all, some of them are end of days. So we check that. And then we have our come again and buy again. If we're going to be doing them, we check those as well. Finally, we come down over here and we get to say from 7 a.m. 10 p.m. what time is Darcy going to be doing these things so I've told her I want my confirmations and campaigns to run at 9 30 every morning my end of day functions I've told her to run them at 6 30 now it's important that you understand something Darcy cannot send out the closing report at 6 30 if you don't close till 7 she'll have nothing to send so she won't bother so the owner won't get anything so Remember this, when setting up your end of day functions, be sure that they are set for at least a half hour, maybe longer, but at least a half hour after you have actually closed your doors, turned out your lights and gone home. Then she should run about a half hour after that to make sure that she's completely up to speed. Same thing goes with the other items here, like the confirmations and campaigns. It doesn't matter what time you run them between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. That's entirely up to you. But we recommend that they be set to run at least a half hour after you have opened your doors, simply so that you can make any changes that you may need to make before she does her job. The come again and the buy again, doesn't matter again what time those go out. We usually recommend that they go out around the same time that the confirmations and campaigns go out, whatever you've selected for them, okay? Once you're done with all of that, then you press accept, and exit. Darcy's set up, she'll run 365 days a year. So you may be closed on Sundays, but on Saturday nights, she's still going to send those emails out to your staff that might say something like, hey, your schedule tomorrow shows nothing scheduled. And then you're closed on Monday. Sunday, 
night will be the same thing. You're scheduled tomorrow, shows nothing scheduled. But they're booked on Tuesday, so Monday night they'll get another email that says your schedule for tomorrow is as follows, and it will show the appointments that they have for the following day, what time, what service they're giving, who the uh, client is. All right? Okay. That's Darcy. Now we're about to get into manual marketing. Do you have any questions for me at all on anything that we covered in Darcy? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Carrie, I do have another question for you. Are you an installed version of the software or are you a cloud version? I believe it's installed. Okay. Then there is an important thing that I need to mention that I didn't. I don't normally mention this because most of our customers now have moved over to the cloud. However, this button here that says Run Darcy, after you've set her up and done everything, you must press that button, Run Darcy, and then Darcy will be running. And she'll run every day, 365 days a year, just as I said. However, if you were to shut down the computer that has Darcy running on her, uh, when okay. you turn it back on, you must remember to click that button again. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about just shutting the software. If I close the software, Darcy's still going to do her jobs. Right. I'm talking about if you were to shut down the actual computer, then when okay. you turn it back on, you must go back to Darcy and run Darcy. With the cloud, that's not an issue because it has nothing to do with the computer that it's on because it's running okay. in the cloud. Darcy's always running. You never have to concern yourself with her. Some of okay. our customers say, hey, my customers didn't get their reminders. And I'm, well, is Darcy running? I so see. that's the first thing that our technicians would ask. Okay. Check. Okay. All right. Okay, um, so now we're going to get to manual marketing. Now, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to go into a client file. We'll go to Ms. Babcock because I use her for everything. And here we have this button that says tracking. And there's some weird things in here. Some of them not so weird. Some of them some. So the color, I've got black here. This is the color of her hair. I've got red, brown, blonde, black, highlight, bleach, etc. Hair length, long, nails, vertical long, broad sideways, rounded, egg-shaped, whatever. Skin type, oily, dry, acne, large pores, small pores. Motorcycle, what the heck is that? The point here is that your tracking items, and you can have up to 10 of them, I've made nine, but you can have up to 10 of them, are entirely up to you. So you can track in ways that are fully unique to your business, whatever that may be. So by creating those tracking items, you've added up to 10 different ways that you can differentiate between customers. You've added them to all of the things that are already in their client file, like the zip code they live in, who they like to see, what services they've received, what product they've purchased. All of those types of things are trackable. So I do have a question. I can go, go ahead, please. So when I'm in clients and adding new clients, they, we can't have a client with the same name. It, it's like, oh, client is already in here. Um, you know, so we have to end up spelling their last name with like Babcock with two Ks if there were two Michelle Babcocks. Um, okay. is just, that just so you know, real quick, I would recommend not doing that because actually misspelling a name, you know, it doesn't look good when a customer receives something. You know, right. so Babcock yeah. with two Ks. What I would simply do is simply add a, a number. So Michelle Babcock okay. one, Michelle Babcock two, something like that. It's just they know then that there's, you know, especially if their name was like John Smith. You know, it's a very yeah. different experience for them. They see John Smith one or John Smith two next to it. That's fine. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of understand that that's the case. So a name a little bit more unique like Michelle Babcock, maybe not so much. But by actual, actually misspelling it, I would say that that's probably not the best way to go. Now, you can actually have two of the same people in the system. And what I mean by that is maybe you did misspell Miss Babcock's name. And so she was entered twice, but it's the mm -hmm. same person. That problem happens as well. And you can merge customers together. So you're left with just one of them, the one you want to keep. All of their history will come in from the but other it is one, And then typical. that one will be removed. But it is typical. typical. No, oh, typical. Yeah, typical that, like you said, John Smith, there could be three of them in one community. Absolutely. It's typical okay, mm -hmm. to not be able to enter them all with different addresses. Yeah, I mean, Is you're that certainly like going to, you, you let, look, you can put somebody in with the same name, with different addresses, different telephone numbers, et cetera. You can do that, but it's going to warn you that you're about to. But it will ask if you still want to add them. Hmm. 
Okay, I'll have to go back and, and try it again. Okay, and it, if that's not the case, then it may be a preference setting. Okay. You just have to choose a preference to allow you to do that. Okay? All yep. right. Um, any other questions on that? No, thank you. My pleasure. Okay, now, just so you know, by the way, you can also have people with completely different names with the same address and telephone numbers. So when you put in somebody's telephone number to look them up, it actually brings up two or three different people, even though it's the same telephone number. And that might be because the system is looking at all the numbers, cell, home, and work, and you might have three people in your system that all live at the same address. That certainly happens. So you have those options as well for you, okay? So getting back to marketing, we've set up our tracking items. And in order to do that, we go to Setup, Configuration, Tracking. And then we can add tracking names. So I've got color, hair length, nails, skin type. These I've created. I can make anything I want. So I could come down here and create a brand new one, my 10th one. And, um, oh, I don't know, let's say something like, um, what's, I don't know, I'll just say eyes, just for the heck of it. And enter, come over here now, and I'll say blue, enter, brown, enter, green, enter, gray, enter, and accept. Now if I go into that same client file, and I go to tracking, I can now, I have another one now that says eyes. And I could say she has brown eyes and accept and save. So in Darcy, I can go to create a list. Now this is my manual marketing. I want to send a specific message out to all my women. Real simple, real basic. I just want to send it out to all of my women. Uh, by the way, I noticed that we just had somebody join us uh, recently, uh, Lourdes Aguirre. Uh, Lourdes, are you able to hear my voice? Yes, hi. Uh, okay. Everything hi. sounds great. Thanks. Okay. Lourdes, I do have some good news for you. I know that you came into class almost a full half hour late, uh, a little more than that, actually. I do want you oh. to know that I am recording this class. And so when this class is over, if you like, I will ask if you would like a copy of it, and I can email you a link so you'll be able to see everything that you did here as well as everything that you missed, okay? Oh, I apologize. Actually, I thought I was on the online class. I'm all confused with the times. Of... That's fine. I'll listen. Not a problem. Because my whole goal is the online to... booking. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Certainly. Uh, this is not the online booking class, by the way. This is the Darcy I, I know Martin that. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You're marketing. All right. Great. Okay. Okay. So here we are again, um, getting back to this. And just, just remember, Lourdes, what I said, that at the end of the class, if you'd like, I can email you a copy of the whole class that you just attended. Okay, awesome. so um, I say, you know what? I want to send a message out just to my women. So I'm going to uncheck male. And then I can give it a name. All women. And I can create a list. And it's going to go through. I've got 22,000 customers in here. And it should only take about 30 seconds to generate that entire list. And it's only generating a list of my women because that's what I selected. And I gave it its own name, like all women here. So we're gonna wait here, probably wait about another 10 seconds and it should be done, and it is done. So of my 22,272 customers, 20,458 of them qualified as female. So now I've got a giant list that I can send things out to. That's one way to do it. I may want a more unique list. So I might say, I want all of my women who ride motorcycles. Now, why would I do something like that? I don't know. That's entirely up to you. The point is, is how unique you can make the list. We do have one of our customers, they're in Montana, and in their little town, um, kind of like Sturgis in South Dakota, they've got this great big motorcycle gathering. And that's where this actually came from when we were talking to them. They wanted to know, hey, how can we reach out to people who come to that gathering year after year? Because there's tens of thousands of people that show up for that in, in this little town during August. And so I said, well, when they come in during that time, just ask them if they're in town for that. And if so, mark it as a tracking item. So in that case, I said, I just want my women who ride motorcycle who have brown eyes. Simple as and then give it a name, like uh, Fem Moto Brown, whatever name you want to give it. And then you can create the list, and it will go through again, all of your customers, and it will look to see who matches that one qualified. Guess who it is? Michelle Babcock, because I said she had brown eyes. She's the only one I chose. 
But the point is, is that now you can create completely targeted lists. And a targeted list is always going to have a higher response rate, more positive responses on a targeted list. Because nobody wants to get an email that says, check out our summer specials, because that feels like spam and advertising. But if I got an email that said, hi, Matt, we know that you like to ride motorcycles and your lower back is probably sore from riding all day. Come on in for a massage. That feels like you're speaking to me directly. Maybe a message that says, uh, hi, Carrie, um, you've been riding your motorcycle all day and you know that wind's been getting in your hair. Come on in for a shampoo and a style before you hit the parties. Whatever the message is, by targeting it like that, you get a much higher response and read rate. So now that we've created lists, we get to go to blast. And every list we've ever created will be listed here. So I can go to a list that I've created like all women. This is the list that I created that's just for all of the women in my database. And now what do I want to do with it? Well, I can export that list. I can browse to somewhere on my computer and send it to where I want. Then I can upload it into something like Constant Contact or Go Loyal or Demand Force, something like that. Or I can go with Blast and forget all of those other companies and not pay those other companies either. Because by going to blast list, I can blast out an email or I can blast out a text. If I haven't already created a list, I'm excuse me, not created a list, if I haven't already created a message, then I go to setup and I can then create an email or create a text that I want to send out. So in this case, let's say this is for all my women, I'm gonna give it a template name like all women. And then my subject line. And I'm going to use open caret, capital CF, closed caret. That, as you can see, will insert the client's first name. So then a comma here. And I'll say, guess what? So this says, Carrie, guess what? Lourdes, guess what? Everyone gets their own. I can choose my font. I can choose my font size. Maybe bold, underline, italicize, change the color of my letters insert hyperlinks, upload my own custom image, and write my body. So I get to write whatever I want and save my template. Then that's gonna be available for me here under email. There it is, all women. Send myself a test email to make sure it looks good. It should have my logo on it. If I uploaded artwork, that'll be there too and the message that I wanted them to receive is going to be there. Once I take a look at it and say, yep, that looks pretty good, I hit process, and all 20,000 of those women are going to get that message. If I chose my Moto Femme Brown, Michelle Babcock would be get, getting whatever the message is that I chose. I can do the same thing with texting, go to setup, create a text, and choose that text. Now, most people think of manual marketing as just that, marketing, promotions. This is our deal that we're offering you. These are the, we've got a, we got too many of this product and we know that you like to buy it, so we're offering you a special. Most people think of it like that, but it doesn't always have to be like that. You can create lists for anything, including what we like to call gap filling. So let's say, for instance, that Christian is one of your employees, and he walks up to you and he says, hey, Lourdes, I'm really sorry, but uh, I just wanted you to know that my three o'clock just canceled, and it's an hour-long service, you know, I'm going to be sitting there on my hands for that time, because in your business, perhaps, you don't get a lot of walk-ins. People are calling for their appointments, and they're booking them for tomorrow or the day after or next week, but they're not calling for this afternoon, necessarily. So you know that Christian, who just got a late cancellation, is going to be open, and we want to fill that time. So what I may do is this. I go to create a list, and I'll say all of my customers who like to see Christian, and then I give it a name, like Christian's clients, and create the list. And I'm not going to bother creating the list because I've already done it. So I go down to my blast. And then I get to find that list that I created. So here I've got my Christian's clients list that I've created. And I want to blast it. And I want to blast an email. And I can choose one that I've already created, of course. There it is, Christian's 3 o'clock. So let's take a look. Let's pretend that I hadn't. I would go ahead in here and type in something like Christian's 3 o'clock. 
which I've already done, so let's pull it up here. So this says, Carrie, there is an opening with Christian today. Remember, these, is, these are only out to Christian's customers. And it says something like, there has been a late cancellation with Christian today. It is at 3 p.m. First person to call to schedule this time will get 25% off their service. So I blast this out to Christian's customers, and hopefully that makes the phone ring. And normally, it's not just one person calling. You might get half a dozen or more people calling for that time to get that special that you're offering. The first person gets it. The other people, though, that call in, you might say, you know what, I'm sorry, it's already booked, but as long as I've got you on the phone, Christian's got availability tomorrow, the next day, whatever. So it may help you even book additional appointments. In fact, I know that that can be the case because we've had a customer call us to tell us that they were actually doing that in kind of a, kind of a slimy way. <laughs> they were actually sending this out about once a week for their 10 employees, ro rotating which employee they did it each day so that everybody got – to have it done about once every other week. Now, if they had a legitimate cancellation, they would do it. But a lot of times what they would do is they would do it for somebody who was booked all day long, didn't have any cancellations, but they'd send it out anyway. People would call in for it. And even the first one would be told, oh, I'm so sorry you missed it. But as long as I've got you on the phone, let me book you with Christian. I've got a, an appointment available for him tomorrow or day after tomorrow or whatever it may be. And so they said that that was actually generating an about a about a dozen additional appointments per employee per month. So it's a little greasy, <laughs> but it's certainly another option. I like when people think outside the box. So that's manual marketing. And that is the class. Do you have any questions for me at all on anything we've covered? Either of you, Carrie, Lourdes? It, it looks no, good, I think it, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying that I'm good. No questions. Yeah, okay. I'm, uh, um, I'm going to definitely give it a try. I have to start collecting a lot more emails. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and to, uh, you know, cell phone numbers, be sure to do that as well, because texting is always popular. Um, now, I do want you guys to be aware of one more thing that I don't normally mention in this class, but now that uh, Apple has finally approved our app and we are about to start rolling the apps out, um, I do want you to know that you can do your marketing directly through the app as well. So instead of just having email and texting as an option, you will also have the app as an option. So your customers that will have your app, if you use the app, you don't have to, but if you do, that you'll be able to push uh, those marketing items directly to their app. They can even confirm their appointments right through their app as well. So I just want you to be aware of that. Finally, Carrie, this question is directed to you. Would you like me to email you a copy of this class that you attended today? Yes, thank you. All right. Would you like me to use the carries on vacation that you uh, put into the system? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Yes. And Lourdes, would you like me to send you? Yes. The okay. And would you like me to use the uh, L underscored uh, AGUI that yes. you put in? Yes, I'll be there. Oh, I mean, I you, should receive, you should receive a link to this class. It's going to be turned into a uh, uh, YouTube video. You should receive a link to this class before end of business today. Uh, however, it is possible that you may get it as late as tomorrow morning. That's fine. All right, guys. Well, have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for attending. One thing I want to say that I like to end every class with is the people that know the most about their software are the people who end up being the happiest with it. So I really do thank you for taking the time uh, to spend with me today. We did have several other people that had signed up that did not appear, so thank you both to Carrie and Lourdes, and have a wonderful day. Take care. Wow. Um, yeah, and I'll see you at 1.30. <laughs> All right. See you then. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.